Okay, so there is a part three. Yeah. Uh, just real quick. I wanted to put in here that, that was over there, that during my research, when I, um, after I had seen the movie, um, obviously, yeah, I was very sure I had Asperger's, but I had to do research, you know, to make sure. So I read, hmm, seven, eight different books uh, by people with Asperger's, by doctors, by nurses, by healthcare practitioners, by people with Asperger's. I just read all kinds. And at the time I was doing the reading, I kept coming across this one phrase. Didn't make sense to me at the time. If you meet or if you know someone with Asperger's, you know one person with Asperger's. It kept coming across it. it kept coming across it. Like, what are they? What? 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 It's been eight years. I've been living with it for a while. I now, I now understand what that is. There is the big umbrella of the conditions uh, that one must present in order to have Asperger's. But those are very individual. And for instance, I had mentioned that I only wear white shirts. Okay, that is my presentation of Asperger's. If you down the road met somebody and they only wore white shirts, you could not say, oh, he must have Asperger's because Oz does and, and he wears white shirts. No. We all present differently. Uh, some people are into blue, but it's blue everywhere. Blue t-shirts, blue jeans, their bedroom is blue, their sheets are blue, their pillowcase is blue. Okay. So, knowing somebody with Asperger's you don't know everything about Asperger's. You know everything about Asperger's pertaining to that individual. Very important. Big difference. Very helpful. Very helpful. And uh, that's that was important. I wanted to include that in my little take here. So. This is the next day, but very important. Just wanted to put that in there. We're done.